Ahlan wa sahlan. In this video, I'm going to talk about using demonstrative pronouns, ismul ishara, with idafa structures and how they work together. I'm going to assume that you have a working understanding of both ismul ishara and definite idafa and how they work. If you would like a review, we do have separate videos on both of those subjects that you can refer back to. So as you know, in a definite idafa, the first noun is definite by definition because it's part of the idafa structure, but it's never going to take a definite marker like a. Never ever. And for kind of the same reason, it also can't be preceded by any demonstrative pronouns like heather or heavy or this, that, those. What we need to do instead is put them after the entire idafa at the end of the phrase. So here I have a couple of simple idafat that we can use. The bedroom, literally the room of sleep. The issue of money, this abstract issue of money. The students of our class or our class's students. And jamiatna. We're going to talk about that last one a little more in a bit. <clears throat> so if we want to say this bedroom, we might be tempted to put heavy at the beginning of this phrase, but what we need to do in order to conform to the rules of Arabic is to put it instead at the end because it can't come before the idafa. So we need instead to say heavy or this issue of money here again qadiyya is feminine with a tamabuta so is ghurfa and since they're the nouns that we're referring to we would need to use heavy again qadiyyatul mal heavy this issue of money or these students of our class Tullab safna. Tullab is a human plural, so we would need to use the human plural version. Ha'ula. Tullab safna ha'ula. These students of our class. And jen atna is interesting. You might be looking at it and thinking, well, if we have an idafa, then we must have multiple nouns. But technically, according to Arab grammarians of old, this na, the possessive pronoun at the end, is serving as a noun. So you've been using idafat all this time, every time you attach a possessive pronoun to a noun. Technically, we're saying something like the university of us, meaning, of course, our university. But because technically it is an idafa, we still can't put the demonstrative pronoun first. We have to put it at the end to say, this university of ours, jamiatuna hedhi. Note that all of these are phrases. They're not really sentences. We don't have a complete idea. If we did put the demonstrative pronouns before, these phrases, then we would have something that's approaching a nominative sentence. So all these are idafa phrases, not really sentences. But if we put the demonstrative pronoun here and said hedihi iya ghurfatunam, this is the bedroom. In formal Arabic, we would need to have kind of a dummy pronoun connecting these two. In spoken Arabic, we could get away with saying di gurfatnaum or hadi gurfatnaum and just rely on intonation. So remember that if you're writing something down. Or this is an issue of money, we could say hadi ya or these are the students of our class, we could say or Hedi 
Et il y a j'ai un appartement. So there, in green here, we would have complete sentences. When you're approaching a text and you see a demonstrative like this that comes after a string of nouns, it's likely to refer to an idafa that precedes it, but if you're reading a text and you see a structure like this with a demonstrative pronoun followed by a separate subject pronoun, it's likely to be the muqtada of a jumla ismiya, right? The subject that is then going to have a predicate.